Owning a home is a dream most of us have. I would like to own my own home. I'm sure you would like to own your own home. Now, the government of Ghana, through the Ministry of Works and Housing, says they want to establish a national mortgage and housing fund to roll out affordable mortgages with flexible terms for you and I to own our homes. Today, we want to talk about home ownership in Ghana. As you can tell, it's a wet day, and I'm out here in OEB to speak to one, a realtor or a promoter of home ownership on how exactly pricing of homes go and how people want to fund their homes. Then I'll speak to a mortgage expert and find out what are the intricacies of borrowing from a financial institution to own a home. Right, thanks for staying with us. My first guest is a man with experience in the real estate market. He sold more homes than I can count. In fact, it's more than a lifetime, if I may say so. He wants to be known as a promoter of homeownership here in Ghana. His name, Bernard Kafui Hanyable. He's going to tell us what goes into the cost of homes in Ghana and why we've come all the way. We've skipped all the bourgeoisie areas, or as some will say, bougie areas, and we've come to not, I won't say not a bougie area, but it's far, if I can say so. Why? Why are we here to look for a home? He's going to tell us what goes into the cost of homes in Ghana and how people normally finance the cost of these homes. Bernard, thank you very much for joining us on PM Express. First thing I want to know is, anytime people are looking for a place to stay, East Ligon, North Ligon, Jowulu, and all these areas seem to pop up. Yet, when it comes to affordability, we are pushed to the areas such as, let's say, Oyarifa, Oyibi, where we are now. What goes into the cost of homes within the places that are perceived to be uh, bourgeoisie? And what goes into the cost of homes in areas that we are now, such as Oyibi? Okay, good. Um, Philip, it's good to be with you um, this time, discussing home ownership and all that. Um, if we are talking about pricing of homes and why people would want to travel all this far to acquire a property. Uh, it has to do more with location, has to do with facilities in that particular area, um, infrastructure, and what have you. Now you realize that currently in Accra, the city is getting choked, mm -hmm. uh, it's becoming overpopulated, True. and uh, people are eager to acquire decent homes. And um, because of the very nature of Accra, prices of properties there are generally high. So um, they would want to at least go not very far from Accra, but where access to their place of work, place of um, schools for their children and all that uh, uh, will, be, will, will be convenient for them. So coming all the way to OEB and the, the outskirts of Accra, mm -hmm. uh, it's now the trend. It's not a trend. And um, for a place like Oibi, if you look at the, the surroundings of Accra, you'd want to look at places that are well planned. And I must say, places like Oibi, Oyarifa, and this part of Accra seems to be well planned as compared to some other areas. So that's why um, there's a lot of movement in this direction. Okay. Um, with the cost of homes, I always hear that if you want to buy a house in East Ligon, Trasaco, etc., uh, over 5 million Ghana cities is the cost. Is that, is that really true from, from where you sit, having sold a lot of homes? Is that true? Yeah, it's, it's true, and sometimes even more than the amount you just quoted. It's also because, as I mentioned earlier, you talk about infrastructure, you talk about access to other facilities, uh, shopping malls and the airports, um, uh, the industries, place of work and all that. So definitely there's a price on location. Yeah, so... Okay. So government says they want to make um, mortgages affordable to all of us through the Ministry of Works and Housing. Last week, we had the Minister of Works and Housing, Samuel Atatia, uh, give us some information on the Nas National Mortgage and Housing Fund they want to roll out that will make homes affordable. So we'll talk about affordable homes. Where we are currently in OEB, can we consider the homes here as affordable? Uh, Philip, if you talk about affordability, 
is quite a, a word that is very subjective. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you ask different people belonging to different income uh, segment or, uh, you know, they would define affordability differently. If you talk about, let's say, the high income earners, and you mention a property price around, let's say, um, 500,000 Ghana CDs, I mean, that is affordable to them. Okay. Now, when you come to the middle class or middle income earners, and um, you mention something around 300,000, it may be scary, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah, so the term affordability is, is, is quite... Um, relative. Relative. But then, uh, looking at people's income, if you can afford to part with, let's say, about 30% or 40% of your income to service uh, a mortgage, to acquire a home, then we will say, yes, um, yeah, it's affordable. Okay, so let me, let, me, let me delve into where we are now. I, 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 I witnessed with, you have two-bedroom houses, three... Yeah and four. Let's, let's, let's look at a two-bedroom house. How much would that cost you? Uh, typically, in a well-planned environment like this, where um, the developer has put in so much, if, I mean, as you walk in, you realize the whole place is fence, it's wall. Mm -hmm. You have 24-7 security presence, uh, drains and everything. The streetscape is beautiful and all that. A typical two-bedroom house in such an environment would be around 300,000 Ghana cities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 300,000 Ghana cities seems... Seems a lot. I mean, um, so it begs the question of affordability. Like mm. you said, it's relative. But to most Ghanaians, I would assume that that should be on the high side. Now, it raises the question of um, financing. But if even a two-bedroom house is 200000 I, I would assume that the three and four should go a bit higher into the 400000 500000 Ghana cities. In financing these homes, Bernard, What's been the typical discussion you've had with people? Are people ready to, one, take mortgages, or two, finance it from their own funds where they come to an agreement with you, make a down payment, and agree that every month we'll pay something? Or what's the funding mix when it comes to procuring homes? Yeah, uh, Philip, before I come to the, um, how people finance their home acquisition, let me just clear your mind on this uh, issue of affordability mm -hmm. and saying 300,000 Ghana cities is quite a lot of money. Yeah, it's true. When you go out there, um, I'm sure you'll get houses, even three-bedroom, four-bedroom houses um, in the open market. That will be lower than the 300,000 Ghana cities. But then you ask yourself where? Uh, access, um, the, the area, security, you know. You go to places, there may not be drains. Uh, access to the place in terms of road infrastructure is not well done. You find yourself in the rainy season, by the time you realize the whole place is flooded. These are things that we usually will not put cost to, or we will not uh, be unable to put value to them. But then it costs you so much at the end of the day, if you go somewhere and buy, let's say, a five bedroom house for, let's say, 250,000 Ghana cities. Somebody buys a two bedroom house here at 300,000 Ghana cities. The person is sound. The person knows that I'm secured, uh, come rain or shine. The house is in a good location, no flooding issue, no water problems, and, and things like security. that. You have security and all that. So, so usually, these are things that you will not put value or cost to. But at the end of the day, it costs you even more. Okay? So I always advise people, if you find yourself in an environment like this, you know your family is safe, your children have access to school, uh, no issues with flooding and water, I mean, it's a, it's a thing to pay for. And, it's yeah, a good investment. Yeah, it's, it's a good investment. And uh, talking about I mean, um, financing of home acquisition, usually we have two, um, two main you know, um, modes of finance. We have um, the self-financing, where you don't go for debt. I mean, you don't go for mortgage. You don't uh, get anything from a bank. Okay? And then we have the mortgage. Sometimes you have some institutions that have their own... House structure. structure in house, okay. and then they are able to finance their workers and all that. But the majority um, are from the mortgage um, companies like um, Stanbeg, Ghana Home Loans, and the likes. Yeah. Ghana Home Loans now GHL Bank. Yes. Yes. Um, um, you see, with the mortgage one, one argues that it's it it takes a toll on those who are paying the mortgages. I don't know if you've had any experience with people that have procured homes or bought homes using mortgages and have defaulted on these payments and as a result their financial institution had to repossess 
have you ever seen such, an ex such a situation before? Yeah, yeah, it, it does happen, but then um, uh, it's, the numbers are quite insignificant. Um, sometimes because of maybe loss of job or uh, death or something, you know, um, somebody may, you know, may lose the property because the person is not able to, to finance or go through the repayment schedule. But then uh, most at times, if you find yourself in that situation, most of these institutions, are, I mean, they welcome you coming to them to renegotiate or tell them what exactly you are going through. And then, I mean, they come out with a new, you know, format for you in terms of repayment. Otherwise, I would say it's not in the majority. Okay. And then finally, as someone who has been in the field for over 12 years, <laughs> you've seen the private sector grow when it comes to the real estate market. Just to pick your brain on this, government always steps into the housing and mortgage area to assist people like you and I to own our dream homes. Just briefly, do you think such an intervention by government is in the right direction? Yeah, Philip, I think so, uh, because looking at the housing deficit, and uh, now people are eager, even um, now the uh, average age of buyers are in the range of 30, 35, you know, people as young as 30 years want to own a property. In our father's time, you would be going towards your pension before you think about home ownership and with all its frustrations and all that. So now people want to own homes and it's difficult. So anytime government comes up with set policies, especially when it is backed by, let's say, your pension and things like that, yeah, it's, it's a big relief to the home, I mean, home buyer. And I think that's, that's something we should encourage government to, to uh, you know, um, embark on. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Mr. Hayable, thank you very much for your time. Thank so, you. that's my guest, Bernard Kafui Hayable. He is a man who promotes homeownership here in Ghana. He sold a lot of homes with about 12 years experience. He was telling us how typically homes are funded, how you and I will buy a home. And mortgages seem to dominate. So government, national mortgage and housing fund is a step in the right direction. Cost of homes will depend on where you are. If you are in the areas like Osu, Laboni, etc., it's going to cost you a whole lot. But if you come down to where we are, there's some affordability. And he says affordability is a relative term. It may depend. But where he is, where we are in OEB. If you have about 300,000 Ghana cities, maybe less, maybe more, you can get your home. So that's Bernard Kafuya here. My next guest is going to tell us how exactly mortgages are structured and what goes into getting funds to even give to you and I as mortgages and what the repayments. So that's who my next guest is going to be. But before we do that, Kafu is going to take us around the house and show us how exactly where we are in as a three bedroom house. He's going to show us the ins and outs of the house. Do stay tuned. Okay, so Philip, so this is a typical three-bedroom house here at Ubuntu Haven. Okay. Um, so this is how the hall is. Okay. Uh, if you look at, even from the ceiling, see how high the ceiling is. Yeah. Uh, the whole floor is tiled. Most of the electrical fittings that we use here are all um, energy efficient. Okay. You realize that okay. we use LED, you know. And um, to my right here is the kitchen. Is the kitchen. Okay. Yeah. This particular kitchen is closed. Uh, we have the option of, you know, uh, if you want um, an open kitchen. Okay. Yes. When you uh, say open and closed kitchen, can you explain that to our viewers? Yeah. When you go to some new homes now, realize that the the kitchen flows into the dining and into the hall. Okay. There are no uh, walls. Yes, okay. it's, I mean, it's okay. just okay. open okay. like that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So a typical kitchen like this comes with uh, fitted cabinets. Okay, fitted cabinets. Uh, so it's already part of the building. It's you part, it's part of it. New. It's part of it. I see and a storeroom. Yes, it comes with storage okay. here um, okay. for your, um, I mean, you can keep your items and, in there. Yeah. And then I'll assume this will take us to the back. This will take you to the backyard. There's a big backyard there. Okay. This guest washroom okay. for your visitors and um, for the occupant of one of, of the bedrooms. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. So, but then the beauty about this is the shower unit is different. And then the, the WC yeah. is different. So even if your visitors are using the WC, someone can be using the bathroom. Yes, we have yes. some homes where they have merged. They've merged them. The it WC creates a lot of them. inconvenience. Exactly. You know that. Okay. So you see, um, the bedroom. Um, as part of the options, we make provision for for wardrobes. Okay. Some, I mean, we try as much as possible to keep the cost down. Okay. I mean, we're okay. talking about affordability. affordability. Sometimes, some people will want. 
has to fit um, the wardrobes for them, fit ACs for them, and they will put all into the, the price for you. Okay. But then if we want to just maintain it basic, we'll just create the provision for wardrobe okay. and make provision for... for I, I can see the air conditioner. Uh, I don't know what to call it, but... Yes, the, yeah, the electric house and the... Yeah, 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 yeah it's exactly. all done. It's all done. Very necessary. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And of Halfway. So you've taken us through the interior of the beautiful three-bedroom house. We've seen the hall, we've seen the kitchen, we've seen the bedrooms. Very comfy, very homey. And the key question we all want to know is, how much exactly would that cost us? Typically, uh, a three-bedroom house like that particular, like this one, mm -hmm. mm, would go for 575,000 Ghana cities. Okay. Is that a lot? Or, or, uh, or, no. Or in your line of work, you think that's affordable for where we are? the infrastructure, the amenities that go into it, it's, it's fine? Yes, for most people who come here, looking at the sort of environment we have here, the street, the street light and all that, yes, they, they sort of understand and uh, appreciate said values, okay? But then, uh, in order not to cut, I, I mean, other homeowners off, we have other units, two bedrooms, even the three bedrooms, we have other variants that cost around 300,000 Ghana cities. Okay. So you are not necessarily tied to just a house like this for 575 but then you can go for a house around 300,000 Ghana cities and that'll be a home for you and your family. That'll be a home for yes. you. So Bernard, Kafu and Hable, our first guest has told us that looking behind us, yeah. we prepared to dole out 575,000 Ghana cities. Yes, you heard me, 575,000. I don't have that but I hope you do. Thank you very much. Right, so we looked at the house, saw the cost was about over 500,000 Ghana cities. We took you around the house to see what you and I can afford in terms of a home. And the issue of affordability kept on coming up. So we're going to continue our conversation with Nana Odenoho Tremanting. He's a real estate lawyer with over 30 years experience. That's a long time older than myself, I must say. And he's a CEO and president of Group Tremanting, formerly Comet Group, they have subsidiaries in agriculture, construction, and properties. He's going to speak to us about, first, our national housing policy under which this National Mortgage and Housing Fund is going to sit. And he's going to explain to us how mortgages can transform our economy. And he'll give us some recommendations on the way forward for this National Mortgage and Housing Fund that you and I, the government says, can tap into to solve our problems. So, Nana. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much. And I'm indeed grateful for me to be given such a platform for us also to share with you ideas. The pleasure is all ours. The pleasure is all ours. Yeah. Thank you very much yes. again. So we, we, we want to look at government's national mortgage and housing fund. Uh, government says they want to provide flexible mortgages for you and I to talk uh, Maybe me, not you perhaps. <laughs> definitely, but mortgages are for everybody. Mm -hmm. It could even be able to extend to a level where you have your property already and you want to take the equity out of it. That's good. And for that matter, I think when we are talking about mortgages, we are not going to limit it to the, those who are going to buy as far as somebody. They may have an advantage in terms of uh, uh, government trying to say that, okay, we are going to give guarantees and some insurance so a first-time buyer has an advantage of probably not paying stamp duty for a price of a property like okay. Britain, anything below 125,000 pounds, you, and you are first-time buyer, your interest rate is different, you don't pay stamp duty, and if it's above then, so it's going, I don't know how the perimeters that we are going to extend, but I hope it's going to be very Before interesting us. in our industry. Okay, the national housing policy, I'm sure this sits within it. So give us a brief of what it sits, yes, uh, what's about. Uh, in the early part of uh, 2010, there of, you know, I had opportunity uh, behind the scenes you know, because when there are these issues, there are some consultations and others. Some, some are very formal, others are not formal. Okay. And some of us have been deep in this regards, opinions and all those things. And, uh, I had the opportunity to be extended with copies of it to look at it and you know, I've, I've well been briefed and I've also perused them. Uh, you can see that our present housing policy, which I believe was launched in 2015, Darrell, mm -hmm. uh, was based on 
the beginning where from 1989, where the World Bank brought in the idea that we should privatize housing from the state housing type where the state housing were supposed to build houses and the people assess them for decent living and they were high purchases. So through the World Bank and then the Senate and others, HFC was established. Okay. Yes, and, and they gave us some money and started that brought about committee 18 and those places using TDC. Uh, it has worked well to a point, but by the 90s, in the middle of it, they started changing again. So at the end of that, there was a concern, and then this idea of having a central, uh, having an, a national policy where the state will play a major role in it. Sure. But because of our background of not encouraging government-led housing delivery, it is based upon the fact that the private sector should be able to produce the houses and then we own it or give it out to people. And within it, it has got the thematic areas that uh, we've all read about it, how it should be, how houses, uh, how houses should be built, the kind of areas and all those things by Western Housing, encouraging and leading the rule for us to have the policy. Uh, the most interesting thing that I saw or I have seen is the issue of having a national housing fund. True. Yes. And the basis of it is to enable people to assess or get cheaper Mortgage. fund mortgages. And I think I'm very happy about it. Okay. First, for the fact that it is our fundamental human right to be housed or to have housing. And it is part of the Constitution. Because your right to live, your right to uh, have food, your right to have education, your right to be employed, these are all part of entrenched provisions of the Constitution. Okay. And, but unfortunately, for a long time, the housing delivery and housing ownership has been quite informal. So I have been advocating since 2005 that we should turn the housing into a formal sector of the economy so that we could all benefit from it. Because it looks quite disjointed, it looks disorganized. So with this, now the way we are going, I'm very, very happy. And I think as we move on, we'll be able to discuss what to do and what kind of in inputs that we have to put in. But for the meantime, the position is that under our national housing policy, it is supposed to lead to a point where we should be able to have a housing for that in the central authority, that is a housing authority that will have a wholesale fund. And it is supposed to be fed by uh, the pension funds, private uh, instruments and bonds and all those things. Uh, to me, I will have a way to say that that is not enough. There should be a way that we should be able to capitalize it in a more aggressive way so they become huge enough and that will help us and it will bring a, a whole lot of ramification in regard to housing. Okay, because um, the, the Minister for Works and Housing, Samata Chiam, yeah. uh, at the press briefing mm. roughly, let's say, a week or two ago, mm. mentioned that the Minister of Works and Housing will collaborate with the Ministry of Finance. Mm. They will establish this, nas this National Mortgage and Housing Fund mm. as a special purpose vehicle, yeah. source funds from, they mentioned housing bonds, mm. they mentioned pension funds, mm. they mentioned the primary reserves of the Bank of Ghana, mm. and they mentioned taxes. Mm. And to the uninformed, he might say, okay, government is tapping into private sector sources mm. together with uh, mm -hmm. public funds. Mm -hmm. But however, private sector funds always chase, um, chase returns or chase capital. Mm -hmm. such, such a system, mm -hmm. do, you, do you think if a private man puts his money into such a fund and government who we know has to lend or give out monies with a developmental agenda, that bridge between private sector looking for returns and government looking for developmental growth, if I can say so, do you think we can meet at the point. I think all this depends in Ghana, as I see, and like everywhere in the world, all depends on the cost of money. In this country, the cost of money is so high, which is not the fault of anybody, but it's a system. And with the digitization, there's that correction that being made. And I believe, like yesterday, the, the governor was saying that the non-performing loan, mm -hmm. the, the threshold is too high. Yeah, very true. I mean, international best practice is 5%. But unfortunately, we are high, high above. So they cannot reduce the 18% or so of the, 
the uh, the the not the banking lending rate because if policy it comes rate. policy rate, if it comes down, then the costs also come down. So if we are able to correct the cost of non-performing, then we'll be able to have cheaper funds. True. Yes, because uh, the international best prices have seen most mortgages are around four point five to five percent, and on the market because of the margins that a mortgagee will put on, or a mortgage institution who is not a bank will go because people will prefer to do a mortgage institution because the, 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 the kind of process is faster and there are no a uh, lot of administrative bottlenecks. So it's about 6.4. And uh, when you look at Germany, it's similar. Britain, similar. So internationally, I have taken for granted that if we are all going to give out loans or give mortgages, and it's going to run about 7% or even maximum 7.5. I don't think 30 years mortgage, a chap at the age of 25 coming out of the school and with a wife having, or whatever it is, a partner having a mortgage and taking 30 years to pay for a property of about $50,000 for a two bedroom where by the 15 year, you may have a, a value in it in terms of appreciation, and at the same time, uh, going to have uh, your, 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 your equity in it will make you even to revise and take a bigger property. Uh, so for that matter, the most important thing about it is the cost of money. But in, because of this cost of money, that's why I believe that we should push in more the, from the national kitty, from okay. the revenue side of Ghana, the Ghana government should be able to say that, look, every year I'm going to push in about 1 billion cities or 2 billion cities or 5 billion cities into it. If we are, we are looking at uh, about uh, uh, last year, if we look at whatever came from the oil, mm -hmm. about 1.5 billion was taken out of the oil, A, B, F, A, and, uh, yeah, I know about that uh, and, found her and then put into uh, uh, SH. Uh, and today, as I read in Business and Financial Times, they are saying that this year we are not going to use all your cash. Uh, yes, we are going to too. send it to Agri. A company, if it's taken out, it's okay. But in addition to that, if we are thinking of producing 250,000 houses a year, in order to show up for the next 10 to 15 years, whatever that has been a shortfall, then it may, we are all talking about the supply side. We are all talking about the supply But it will mean that if you granted that the minimum cost of production of an affordable property is not less than $200 per square meter, though we are not to call dollar. Dollar, but yes, true. <laughs> whatever, whatever. So yeah, that's about 1,000 and uh, yes. plus. So there is no property to me a very decent property, to me, a very uh, property that has an integrity, a qualify as a house, which we normally take the 120 square meter for the minimum as required by the national code, the building code. Then you need no less than $24,000 to provide that property. And that doesn't bring in the cost of the land facilities in that area, which will mark it up average about 20%, the land percentage about 10 so it will be putting you around 35 to 40 thousand yeah. if the state is taking some of its land bank for it i would demand that the state owns it and it is a business it is money yeah. the state is the biggest business in the world in the, country. in the country so whatever it gives us it should get some margin that will make us recoup whatever we invested because the the what the typical shantima would say the inchima <laughs> that means those that are going to come after us also may need some places. So we cannot just say that we are dashing the land. No, we cannot. So we should do all that calculation and then we come that averagely about $40,000, $50,000 house of $200 per square meter with that kind of uh, city equivalent. And, and then you look at it and say, that, okay, how are we going to fund two, the first 250,000 houses? So you need at least half of it in terms of, so you need about $5 billion to start. Because if you start with the $5 billion, that within a year you produce them. And if you, because when I give you a job for you to do, as you are doing, others who also want it 
will pay their normal 20%. So that at the end of the day, uh, they have also chipped in something. So we must do the calculation and know that we need 250,000 houses a year. And for the next 10 years, we are going to produce 2.5 million houses because we are going to do a 10-year period. And we should know that this is not like education where the child goes to school and pays something to govern only by, only by indirectly yeah. using the payee, which if a liberal earns 400 cities and he becomes an engineer earns 2,000. So the payee will show up and the government will get it back in the form of payee. But in terms of housing, we are producing to sell. So we should be able to say that, look, from the start, we need a $5 billion. Okay. And the $5 billion, it should be cheap. Because in Tennessee, nowhere have I ever seen that the cost of money being sold to Ghana less than 8.5. No. I've shown up, I've talked to Japan, Singapore, I'm dealing with companies. The cheapest is 8.5. But if we can go by international best practice as we are seeing, then we need to give a mortgage of 35 years or 30 years at 6.5. I will, I will, I will, I will come to, to the mortgage bit and you help me understand something here about the number of people who take mortgages and complain all the time about the denomination of it. It seems that most of the mortgages are denominated in dollars, so therefore you pay in the CD equivalent. And any time the CD depreciates, people are found wanting. We'll, we'll look at that and see how best we can Yeah, go. but under the national uh, housing, housing policy. policy, we are supposed to have the wholesale fund, and it will be terminable in cities. My only concern is that to raise a quantum of money that can make it enough to cover the basic need of us. We need to bring the state inside. inside. So and I'm saying that whatever that we want to tap, it should be big enough to give it that push. That push. Because it's going to be beneficial to us. So which more, I can. So more state, so the state should have a bigger role in yes. the housing and mortgage market yes. than we are seeing now where the mm, private yes. sector is the one actually dishing out Yes, the because it happened during the time of Roosevelt in 1934. Okay, that's you in the USA. See, in the US, in 1929, American economy collapsed under Hoover. The Republican Party of America was mm -hmm. in control. True. And it collapsed. People were just desperate. Okay. So the, 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 the Democrats took advantage of it. And then uh, uh, F.D. Roosevelt campaigned. On his high point deal, among them was housing. And then it was there that they were able to show up, get a lot of funds, and roped in a lot of people, the marginal people who were not part of the housing uh, delivery scheme and also the, the mortgages. Among them were the Hispanic, among them were the blacks. Okay. It was through Roosevelt by 1934, then it brought it and then brought the housing boom. And this housing is the main business. In America, True. yes, because 800 housing start means they are up. If it goes down, so they it's state the pump, pump, pump money. Okay. My guest, Nana Odenoho Tremantin, he's a CEO and president of the Tremantin Group. We're taking a quick break. We'll be right back. Right, thanks for staying with us. My name is Philip Nanfuri and my guest Nana Odenoho Tremantin. He's a CEO and president of the Tremantin Group, formerly the Comet Group, and he's a real estate lawyer with over 30 years experience. We're just looking at the National Mortgage and Housing Fund and whether it can really solve our housing challenges as we have in the country. Right now they said that housing deficits, they meaning the Ministry of Works and Housing, has put that figure around 2 million housing units. That's the deficit within the country. Is it a supply issue, is it a demand issue? We'll find out shortly. But now I want to look at mortgages. I know some people who have taken mortgages from financial institutions and are burdened with the repayments or the monthly servicing of those mortgages. Anytime the Ghana city depreciates, most of these mortgages are foreign denominated, as we hear, and as a result, you are supposed to pay more. That's what we are told. Is that really the case on the ground? And that's going to share with us some understanding of mortgages, and he's going to tell us how exactly we should understand mortgages so that when we go and take a mortgage, we don't have any problems. Nana, so I, was, I, I, I have met people who have had problems with their mortgages. They always complain about it, the depreciation and etc. 
and it seems to affect them. That's those who are taking dollar denominated. We have those who are also taking C denominated and That's they have to pay in 30s percent. Now we see interest rates coming <coughs> down, but not enough. Like you said, there is some governor mentioned yesterday at the CEO summit about the the policy rates the difference between and how the non-performing loans are affecting it. So with mortgages, then how do we help the common man? Because what can we learn from the problems they are having here? And what can the government intervention do to alleviate their problems? Okay, uh, let me say this, that mortgages are very old, old system that has been permeating in all over the world for a long time. When the Industrial Revolution came, people decided to leave their homes to go and find jobs. And then with the Great Depressions in Europe, uh, people then started to have their own properties. But I will say something. My father told me that buildings will never stop. We will always build. build. But the mode of building, the payment for the building, that will change. In Ghana, oh, everybody before probably independence never went in for any mortgage. They were doing their own things. They were building their own houses. Mm -hmm. Because the economy was a very primary economy. And therefore, you go to your farm, you get your cocoa. And fortunately for us, with the coming of the Marshall Plan, a lot of consumption went on after the Second World War. So the price of cocoa lifted from 1940 to 100 pounds per, 100 pounds per ton to 420 pounds by 1951, 52. So there was so much money in the economy. So in Ashanti region where the cocoa flow had just gotten there, they were building huge three-story houses that are suffer. Okay. Cool and then Tafo. So they will call their nieces, their nephews, oh, because he called Kofadani Bitremu. So as a result of that, we have 90% of houses or whatever properties that we have in this country being privately owned by private means. Yeah. The, the, the companies and government has only 5% of the housing stock as per the 2010 population census, the housing and population yeah. census. But as the economy is diversified, as there's more commerciality in the economy, as there's more technology, there's more industrialization coming. Naturally, there's a need for it because there are, we have diverse uh, ones, we have uh, more use for our money, the opportunity mm -hmm. cost. So there's a need for us to find a way of getting a system of paying for a house, but not the way that we've been doing it now. Okay. What we've been doing now is that because you will just get some money. First, you take some small money and give it to the girlfriend, put it down, going to marry you. You will steal your money. As a company, you will steal your money. I have had the opportunity. I own over 21 subsidiaries. And when there are problems and then there's that tea free or whatever it is, and a fraud, and then we arrest the person. The first thing is that he gives some money to the girlfriend to go and put down because he's going to marry him. Yeah, so Are you serious? Then he would then go and buy land around Kasua because it's about 3,000, 4,000. And then he would then put some money and then buy a car. And then when you ask him, you tell him his uncle brought it to him from him <laughs> from, uh, from Canada. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, we should be serious. This 4,000 cities that he's gone for and land in Kasua, there's no electricity, there's no anything. Then he start building. By the time he gets to the roof, he wants to go and live inside. Whatever the fundamentals in building, he has not respected it. And then you then put a pressure on the government to give him a road, mm -hmm. electricity, and yes. water. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you will not vote for the government. When the law 936 has written that there's no way that you should build your house without paying for a development levy. Mm -hmm. True. It's inside. But who pay for it? The law says that don't give the person a permit unless a development levy has been paid. Right. And then, so it's the development plus building permit. Well, the building permit deals with integrity, whether your structures are right, whether you are going by the health regulations and all that. But here I am in this country, people build in a house without those things. So with the coming of the mortgages, they are saying that you go and take money and buy your house or even build. But then, because it is a mortgage and it's money that you have to pay back, the mortgagee will make sure that Whatever that you are going to use, it is well used so that the thing will stay for 50 mm -hmm. years or 35 years or whatever it is. And at the end of the day, mortgages are not only for going to live in it and sleep inside as a, as a shelter, mm -hmm. but it's also an investment. investment. Very true. 
And I believe that if, uh, just as central, I believe that if we continue and we are serious about mortgages, to me, it has even a social effect. People who marry, the two of you are owing the property. If you leave the woman and then chop chop and by five years you are fed up, you can't <laughs> run away. Because, because you are owing it jointly, you can't run away. Yeah, true. So the woman will bond you there. But now people just run away and go and live another way. So socially, it will bring social harmony in terms of family units. Okay. Interesting. Point. Yes. And I have been campaigning this thing. That if we want to believe in the morality of the society and the family unit as a basis for stability and parentage, then we should look at mortgage very seriously. Okay. The second aspect of it is that it will bring an ordered society and then develop and control. If most of the houses are turned into the formal sector, where people have taken mortgages. It doesn't bother so much for the government to go and look for property taxes. Because by the law, 936 has stated that any time that the property is mortgaged, when you are going to file for property taxes and then special levies and general raised by the assembly, you should serve it on the mortgagee, okay. who will automatically come and pay. Mm -hmm. So collection becomes easier, and it will be used to administer the environment. So it will help the The sanitation matter, everything is gone. Police matter, because any time that an area is well built and well taken care of, security, police station, school, sanitation, flood, no, because you do the engineering. So I have been campaigning, and I'm like one of the happiest men that the government has accepted our cry and listened to us, and we are going to do mortgages. When you are looking at mortgages, first, you should first ask yourself, what is the cost of building? I have a friend who came to me and wanted to buy a house. Mm -hmm. And he did it and come from London, he would do all the calculation, and he would talk and talk and talk and say, okay, madam, me, if I tell you, people say that developers don't build good houses and all that, it's not true. Those of you coming from London, you come, because you are not able to pay all, and when I come and demand my money, you will then fight me, then you will destroy me by lying to people. But I will do a test. This property is so and so amount of money. But in the first place, I will encourage you to get a contractor. This is the same design. Build your own house. It took the woman 15 years to build the same house. So I asked her, the 15 years that you have built it, by the time you finish, most of the things that has been used to build the house oh. are, are molded yeah. and you don't want it. The past 15 years, assuming that you were living in Ghana and you wanted to rent a place, wouldn't you be paying about 1,000 cities for two bedrooms? Mm -hmm. And 1,000 cities for two bedroom times 15 years is how much? And this money that you are using to build was being wasted because look at the number of years that you have taken to build. So it is always better to buy a house than pay the mortgage. Yeah. However, the price, the incidental on it in terms of interest, we sit down and look at it and see if the cost of money comes down, then it is cheaper. It because cheaper. the advantage of a mortgage is that the property as you, you live in it, because it's organized, the integrity is okay, the environment is okay, it appreciates and creates an urban land value uh, which appreciates your property. So by the time that your 20-year mortgage completes and you finish paying, the whole 100% equity is now yours. Mm -hmm. You have gained as a result of rental values that you have generated in it. And less the cost of maintenance and the cost of uh, paying your basic rates and uh, property taxes. Okay. So uh, it is a good investment. If people come and tell me that, oh, you see, mortgages, the cost of it is too high. Where is it in the world that everybody is qualified for mortgage? Every country, there's a threshold. Okay. When you go to uh, Britain, they have a threshold. threshold. When you go to America, they will tell you if you don't earn $60,000 aggregate uh, if, uh, for between you and your wife or whatever, you don't qualify. So we are talking about mortgage for people who can afford to buy. Then the state, out of the quantum of whatever the state has gotten, then the state has, can take a certain percentage and give it for social housing or for subsidized rent. Okay. It is not compulsory that everybody should build a house. Okay. It is not compulsory that everybody should get a mortgage. Some can acquire mortgages by virtue of whatever threshold that we get. Because okay. averagely, you need to spend not more than 20% of your money on 
mortgages. Okay. And then thirdly, generally in the world, I have looked at it. Whatever that you are doing, you should not spend more than 36% of your income to take care of your rates, your insurance, your car insurance, your mortgages. It's 36%. So if you don't fall into the threshold, we we'll don't push you there. But the cost of properties, you cannot run away from it. The basic is what we are doing in Ghana. Ghana properties are so cheap. It costs you the same house that we are living here. Mm -hmm. If this house is $3.5 million, if it were to be in Nigeria in a very good area like East Legon here, it will still be double the price here. Yeah. You can check it. Okay. Yeah, it's reflected by the income that you earn. Okay. So, Nana, I see you are for the mortgage fund. Too much. I see you are for government's intervention Too much. in this sector. Now, we've seen over the course of our development stage that governments implement stuff and don't seem to follow it through. As we wrap up on our conversation, tell us what we should do as a people, as government, to ensure that this National Mortgage and Housing Fund is followed through to the letter and our housing industry, mortgage industry, is solid. Okay. Um, I recently traveled for uh, an agri program in London. And uh, in a business class, that's where you get a lot of conversation. Yes, and true, very true. Uh, there was a, uh, a Canadian professor who came to the University of Ghana for a program on the World Bank, every, every day World Bank. <laughs> and I don't know what World Bank does for us. <laughs> we are always the World Bank. <laughs> was talking and told me that there's so much abundance in Ghana, so much programs, so many policies, and the interconnection, and then the implement has become a problem. There are bottlenecks because of so many structures. The president has got a good intention. He's a, he's a guy, he's good. Mm -hmm. But how to get so many of these things that he believes in that has become a problem. So we need NGOs with the private sector. We look at it, if we are interested in these mortgages and all that, and we know the benefits. After all, what we are doing in governance is to improve the quality of lifestyle of man. Mm -hmm. Whoever lives here should enjoy it. So we should be able to have our NGOs, we should have pressure groups, we should have professional groups canvassing, lobbying, and hitting that this is necessary and we should be making noise, not noise in terms of disguisedly, but noise in terms of cohesiveness, having good things, and therefore we push it. Secondly, there are so many areas that we've not captured. We talk about rent tax. How many rent tax do we pay? We don't. Most of us may be great offenders. Until we all holistically say that we are doing it, everybody will be dodging it. True. That is right. So let's all canvas and advocate for us to pay our rent taxes. There are so many areas in real estate. I wrote an article about this thing in 2015. That the real estate area, the real estate taxes, and then annuities are the major Areas that we should look at in order to raise funds to show up for our mortgages. Okay. What is cheaper and more, most invariably free. Okay. Among them is estate duty. I live in a country and when somebody dies and then they are going for letters of administration, they just walk to the, the, the lawyer's office. He writes, if I own this property and it becomes an estate because I'm dead, we should demand that there should be a valuation department inside the high court so that we inspect and then evaluate and value the property mm -hmm. and then levy the duty accordingly. At the moment, it's about 10, 3%. South Africa has it, and it gives them a lot of money. Britain, they don't joke with it. Estate duty. This one, no be spare parts matter. <laughs> ah, if you are talking about property, you've been able to build a property, and the person dies and is going, it becomes a booty, the state should enjoy it. Me, as a lawyer, I have had the opportunity to look at a lot of politicians' uh, uh, wills. And if I show you one, you'll be surprised that in this country we are not serious. That people amass such wealth mm -hmm. and they die and leave it for their wives and kids. And we don't find out and find out from them where they had it. No can you sit down like that. You would demand. Yeah. That this thing, let's find out where the man had his business. 
That's a state. We should not let people be in free like that. True. Secondly, there are areas like betterment. If we are going to do real estate and we are going to do more housing, the law 936, which I love it because it's like my Bible, <laughs> says that it is the duty of the district where the house is to be put to acquire house, the land, service it, own it, and then the developer puts it on it. The sessions are there. Anybody who calls me in any forum, even before the cabinet, I want to address this issue. This hula balloon and the fighting at the court and all that is because we are not using our laws. Because the state has the power to acquire anything, then give it to me for me to build, and I pay my money to the state. Yes. So whether you are 10 people fighting, when they, when they tell the uh, a chief gives you a land in Ghana or a head of family, then they turn around and use their sons and children to go and raise there. And because police have arrested them and they are prosecuting them, then they file a new action against you, the real owner, and perpetually you are sitting at the court. What kind of country is this? A lot, of work, a lot of work needs to be done. Sure, a lot of work sure, needs to be done. sure. This country has no problem. It's because our laws are there and people don't go and find it. My last bit about it is that if it's better, the, state, the law says that Anytime you say you didn't pay for a development levy and government brings in facilities to increase the value of your property in the area in the form of public works, like drains, like uh, wood to me spread, or like asphalt, the valuation board is supposed to calculate for you the amount of money you have to pay in a form of betterment as a result of the revaluation or the appreciation of the value of your property. So that it goes to the state. And the law says it should be put into a separate account. That should be used to create more infrastructure and services for the good of that society. And we sit down here and we are talking. We just follow the laws. We need to follow the laws. I don't expect the minister going to stand at San Corey and say, I will bring you house and I will do this. The laws are there. Urban roads should be part of many metropolitan roads. The engineers should be there. Give us the bills. Give us the budget. This should not lie in the mouth of anybody sitting anywhere to come and tell me before I get a road. No, no. Yeah, Please so me. conclusively, we can raise a lot of money which should come from the state. At worst, even cement, 15 million tons of cement a year is consumed here. One ton of cement is 20 bucks. 20 bucks we are selling currently at 35 cities. 35 cities is about seven dollars. For a long time, we should go back to 1990s. A bag of cement, when it was being controlled by a name I will not say monopolistically, it was going around nine dollars equivalent. So for me, with that luck, let's put a dollar on a bag of cement. Then it will give you 300 million dollars to show up in 2000 fund. But I don't believe in only the pension. The pension for how many people are paying pensions? Ghana population is 30 million. We have almost 10 million being actual workforce. Only 1 million are paying pensions. Out of the 1 million, 700,000 are government employees. Out of it, 35%, almost about 40%, are teachers. How much do they earn? So, pension funds are not enough. Let's go to California. The California Teachers Fund was the money that used for uh, 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 these people who came to do the color oil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The same Californian funds were used to do real estate. Uh, teachers funds and the civil servant funds were, do, were used to do real estate in India. Big. California has got the big. Funds are used. Yes. Are those in the US. Okay. Yes. So, man, I as we draw down the curtain, yeah. more government intervention, a varied yeah. mix of funding sources, yes. stable and then um, sustainable yes. funding sources is yeah. the key. You yeah. are for the mortgage fund, and, sure. you, and you make sure, and from your assertions today, yeah. I know that if we do the right thing, we'll be fine. Okay, thank you. Yes. My guest, Nana Odenoho Tremantin, he's a CEO and president of the Tremantin Group, formerly the Commerce Group. They have subsidiaries, over 21 subsidiaries, and he's a real estate lawyer with over 30 years' experience. He's been my second guest on this housing and mortgage edition of PM Express, the business edition. And my name is Philip Nanfuri. Thank you. Uh -huh.